Welcome back. As Congress continues to work on police reform in the Senate, there are many law enforcement agencies proactively working right now with community groups to develop stronger relationships with the black community. So tonight we focus on how the organization Hope for Prisoners and the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department are working together to help transform the lives of incarcerated men and women to help them successfully reenter the workforce, their families and community. Joining us now to talk about all of this, Assistant Sheriff Andy Walsh and John Ponder, the founder and CEO of Hope for Prisoners. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me. This is an important conversation about police reform. And normally it revolves around no-knock warrants, anti-lynching, and of course qualified immunity, which is being talked about. And certainly those are critical aspects of reform, but you're also involved in another type of reform by helping those who are incarcerated. John, let me begin with you. How does it work? Yeah, so thank you so much for having me here, uh, Kelly. Uh, you know, our organization works with the men, women, and young adults that are exiting different arenas of our judicial system to help them to successfully reintegrate back into our community, making sure that we are providing the sort of the supportive services to help them to do that uh, effectively. We do that through uh, training and mentoring. And one of the things that has been tremendously successful uh, with us is that mentoring and training comes from some of the men and women from the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department that serves as mentors and trainers to help the men and women uh, not only get out in the community uh, and not ever reoffend again, but the police department has come alongside to see what can they do to help men and women begin to live levels of life that most people only dream of. And it has been very uh, effective. Sheriff, my understanding is that there are about 120 uh, officers from the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department who are enjoined in this effort. And actually, some of the people that have been arrested, you are actually partnering with and mentoring them to help them back on the road to recovery to be transformed. How does that happen? Well, it's uh, a tribute to John and his ability to, uh, you know, he's found his way into our organization and he inspires uh, us as an organization to do a lot of great things. Uh, you know, and look, law enforcement officers and their families and their life experiences, uh, you know, lead them to wanting to help people. And uh, that's a big part of what people become a police officer for to begin with is to help people. And John's been able to uh, inspire our organization to be mentors and be guides to those folks uh, that are coming through the criminal justice system and then coming back and uh, re-entering the neighborhoods, you know, and re-entering our community and helping them become enfranchised when they have a sense of being disenfranchised. And the police are part of the group or part of the world that they look at that they're disenfranchised from uh, when they're coming back to the community. And this is a, just a, a great program that we've been a part of for you know, about 10 years, and uh, it's worked effectively for us in, uh, the, in bringing families and being, bringing people back together and bringing them back into the community. And so how does it help to the bigger picture of, of police reform, which seems to be languishing right now in the Congress? Real quickly, Sheriff. Yeah, you know, you know, Kelly, it's a great uh, point because uh, we use the term police reform, but, um, you know, more appropriately to be discussed, I think, on the national level will be, you know, criminal justice reform. It's not just the police. There's so many parts of the criminal justice system that, you know, constantly uh, we need to look at and need to review and need to make sure are, are working effectively. And, you know, yes, uh, understandably that there are concerns with policing in general, but uh, also there's parts of the criminal justice system that, uh, can can be in, included in this conversation so that we take a whole approach to uh, the entire criminal justice system to make the world a better place. And John, you are to be commended for what you created uh, to, to help this get along. I, I wish we had more time to talk to you both, but John Bonder, founder of Hope for Prisoners, a very successful program that's being modeled across the country for helping people get back to their lives. and. Uh, Sheriff, thank you for joining us as well to show us how policing and prison reform can help with the greater good of police reform. Thank you both.